At Magoosh, we've had the honor of getting to know students from many different backgrounds. Although we as a company focus primarily on leveling the playing field for test prep, we know that students are so much more than just a test score. This summer, we're amplifying student voices and highlighting the great work that student activists do all across the country. Make sure to subscribe to hear their inspirational stories as part of our Magoosh Student Voices video series. Hi, everyone. Today, I have the pleasure of talking with Avery, who is a rising senior and also a student activist. Thank you so much for joining us, Avery. Thank you for having me. So it'd be great to just hear a little bit about you and uh, what your activism work entails. Yeah, um, so the, a lot of the activism work that I'm doing, it revolves around education equity um, and the intersections of racial equity, um, but honestly, just like anything that has to relate with like, like the rights of students. That's fantastic. How did you get started with this work? Well, um, I had always been interested in racial equity. Um, my parents worked in it. It was just like a conversation at the dinner table. Um, but it wasn't until I had an internship, like my sophomore year, going into like the summer of my sophomore year, going into junior year, that kind of like transformed the way I thought about race in this country. Um, I had this internship with the Poverty and Race Research Action Council. Um, and I remember the very first day I walked into the office of, um, the director and he said Avery if you get anything out of this internship it's going to be from this book it was called the color of law it was about the history of housing segregation in this country um and I really realized that the root of a lot of our issues um as it relates to race really boil down to housing and education um so when I got back to school you know I really wanted to do something about it I felt like I had the key and I had this knowledge that not a lot of people had because I think too that when we learn about like anti-racist education in school, we just kind of learned, oh, there was slavery, there was the civil rights movement, um, and everything's fine now, like racism is over. So um, this was like a huge shock to me and I felt like I had this key and I had like this knowledge that I had to share with people. So I just like, I went back to school, I started advocating just within like the Black Student Union at my school. And then it expanded when I started a chapter of the Minority Scholars Program. And then now I'm doing things countywide, so. Wow, that's a really amazing story. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about um, the book, and which kind of feels like it launched everything. Um, what were some of the big things that you learned from that book? Uh, one thing that I think is really interesting, um, one of the myths that the author really tries to dispel is the myth that segregation is just like, something that happened but really all of it was government sanctioned which was like a huge shock to me um and especially to when we like look at the civil rights movement we say oh we had brown versus board of education but that's just school segregation it doesn't cover housing segregation at all so like if you notice in a lot of middle class areas there are no apartments and that's entirely intentional so that you can keep like uh working class families and people of color out and that was just like a huge shock to me Wow, it's, uh, it's really disheartening to hear about so many policies that have happened throughout time that have caused you know, decades and, and generations of inequity. So when you uh, learned all of this, how did you bring it back to your school? And also what was the response from your peers, from your teachers, from the school administrators? Yeah, um, so the way I decided to do it, just kind of like work with the existing structures that I had. I had gotten involved in my school's Black Student Union, loved the VSU, um, but it was mostly a social club. And I, I really wanted to bring this advocacy component to it. So I, I got a leadership position and I said, okay, like we're going to switch it up this year. Not only are we going to have like a safe space for Black students where we can just like hang out and like understand like each other's experiences, but let's also like advocate for ourselves like within the school and make it a better experience for us and other students of color to come. Um, so what we really focused on was um, like the achievement gap in our school. Um, I, it was really surprising to see because where I go to school, Montgomery County, it's heralded as like really liberal and we're one of the better examples, but even we have so many issues, uh, even within like our school that like these really stark differences um, it was like a great response. Like um, we 
sat down with the principal we had a meeting about it and she was like okay like i want to assist you in this we actually have some funding to start like a chapter of the minority scholars program so how about you do that and have like a club dedicated like entirely to the achievement gap so it was great that we had um, such a supportive administration. I think that really speaks to the importance of putting people of color in leadership positions. Our principal was a black woman, a lot of the administrators, black women. So hearing from us black women and like sitting all at the table together, that was such a cool experience. I know um, that's not like a common experience for a lot of people. So I was really lucky that when I was first coming into like my leadership, I had support from women who like understood my lived experiences um, and supported me. That's fantastic. It sounds like you have some mentors within your own community. Uh, do you have any mentors that are um, outside of your community or I guess anyone you want to shout out here and say thank you to? Yeah, of course. Um, so she's kind of sort of outside. Um, my biggest mentor who I owe like so much to is uh, Anika Mansour. She's the executive director of the Youth Activism Project. Um, she works at Magoo. She got me started in all of this. I, I was passionate about it, but I didn't know how to like expand um, and really work to create change. And Anika has been such an inspiration. Um, she's, she helped me start like the countywide stuff. I was just doing things in my school. I really didn't know that um, I could create change at the county level. Um, I, I can't vote, you know. I, I really didn't think I could do anything, but Anika was like, yes, like you can. Um, and she really just helped me like start everything. So huge shout out to her. That's fantastic. And Anika is awesome. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the countywide work. What does that look like? Yeah, um, so it kind of uh, forms in this one group that I started, Students Toward Equitable Public Schools. Um, initially, we coalesced around the boundary analysis, which is where I first met Anika. Um, our school county, we have uh, boundaries that dictate like where you'll go to school, what your school assignment will be. Um, and they haven't changed those in 35 years, which is insane because the demographics have changed so much. The concentration of students is drastically different than it was 35 years ago. Um, and what it does, it's fiscally irresponsible and it compounds the segregation that we already have. Um, my county is majority minority. Um, but we have schools that are like 70% white, which doesn't make any sense like mathematically. Like how is that a thing? Um, so we really wanted to change that. And there's like a different, a very clear, like different standard of education. Um, colloquially, we refer to them as the W schools, just like this one little on, like this wealthy enclave of white and Asian students. And everybody knows it. Like, it's just like a thing. Oh, the W schools. Um, and it, there's like this connotation that like they're better than everybody else. Um, and cause that's just like what happens when you, uh, have like this enclave of just like wealthy people all together and you're not like dispersing those resources. Um, so that was really important to us. And then from there, we've just kind of been responding to the moment. This has been a crazy year, um, which makes me so thankful that I got into this now and that we could really like include students' voices um, in the dialogue. Like for example, around coronavirus, just making sure that like distance learning is equitable and you're reaching all students, everybody has access to a Chromebook, um, Wi-Fi. And then seeing the parallels between police brutality outside and like school resource officers within our schools. So working to get um, school resource officers out as well. So yeah, that's just kind of what we've been doing, just like responding to the moment as best we can. Yeah, it's certainly been a whirlwind of a year and it looks like it will continue to be that way. What does your senior year look like so far? It's crazy. So I'm not going back to school for the entire year of 2020. Like when I left in March, that was it, which is actually, it's funny because I didn't think that we'd be out that long. I actually left my guitar at school. That's like, oh, like we'll be back. And now we, I won't walk back into the building until January of 2021. Um, it's disappointing, but I'm glad they made that decision because I really don't think it's right to put people's lives at risk, you know, and especially thinking of like the teachers who may be older and have like more like health concerns. Yeah, definitely. And we got to all look out for each other and we're, we're all in it together. Tell me a little bit more about the advocacy that you have done around uh, coronavirus and this year. You mentioned um, getting Chromebooks in the hands of students. Um, what has that work looked like? And, um, and how, do you feel that your district is doing enough? Um, do you think there's room for improvement? 
Yeah, um, well, I definitely want to like clarify and shout out to my county. They've done a good job of keeping equity in mind. We didn't have to push them to, you know, think about delivering Chromebooks and Wi-Fi hotspots. They already were doing that, which is great. Um, but the ways that we have like influence specifically, um, we made recommendations as to how like technology should look and just like what populations to make sure to focus on. I know um, a lot of like disability rights advocates are worried about students who get like their uh, like training in school and then also like if you're nonverbal and you have like an iPad from school, like what is that going to look like? Because like a Chromebook doesn't make up for that. Um, so we've just like been making recommendations in terms of that. Um, one of our members also, Zoe Tashayev, she wrote this great petition um, that advocated for like a certain grading policy, which we thought was like the most equitable considering like people's situations. Um, and that like people aren't learning the same and they don't like, they might have to like help out their families right now. Um, so yeah, I think our county has done a good job. Um, and I, I really think they are like making a commitment to having equity in mind. Um, there is always room to improve. Uh, but I'm happy with the decisions they've made so far and the ways they're actually like listening to students. That's fantastic that you're getting uh, that two-way communication with the administration and that they're listening to students. So when other people ask you, um, how do you describe student activism in your own words? Honestly, I guess just like students working to make the change that they want to see. Um, I feel like the title student activism can be kind of daunting, but you would be surprised like how much of an impact you can have on your community. I know I've been shocked to see what I was like I said, like when I started this, I couldn't vote and I really didn't think, I thought I was going to have to wait until I did this as my career. So it's crazy to see the impact we've already had on the community. That's great. And what has uh, college exploration looked like this year? I know there's been so much uncertainty um, as you're considering your next step, higher education you know, after high school. What does that look like? It's definitely really difficult. A lot of the things that I was counting on are no longer like factors that I can consider. Um, I really wanted to visit college campuses, of course, and I haven't been able to do that. I haven't visited any. Um, and in terms of like, taking like the SAT, for example, literally the day they had scheduled at my school, it was the week after we like left forever. So I, I missed, I'm so dramatically left forever, but I missed it. Um, so just like worrying about that and just in my county too, we canceled it for August as well. So we haven't had any opportunities, um, which I mean, I applaud that decision, like safety and first and like lives over like an SAT. Um, but yeah, it's definitely been difficult. Um, and really getting a feel for a school is really hard, like online, like via Google. Um, one thing I've really utilized is the virtual tour. I really appreciate some schools have had like panels um, with the students, um, information sessions, uh, like virtual tours. So I've really like utilized those like as much as I can. Yeah, it seems like colleges are definitely adapting to this new world and, and trying their best and a lot of students too. Uh, at the colleges are really making the changes and um, making it more welcoming for, for prospective students. Uh, so how do you think um, your activism is going to look this year in particular, kind of thinking about your senior year, fall 2020, which you already know is all distance learning, and spring 2021, which is uncertain. Um, what does that look like in terms of uh, your activist work? Well, um, there are some benefits. Uh, Montgomery County, where I live, is huge, really broad spanning. So I mean, the benefit of Zoom is that everybody can meet and just like hop on the computer. So I really appreciate that. I've been able to connect and learn from many activists across the nation, which is really incredible. I definitely wouldn't have had that opportunity. Like if it weren't for these circumstances, I didn't even know about Zoom before this and now it's all I do. Um, so yeah, those are definitely some assets, but it is difficult to like building that like team building aspect and really having like retention because like activism really depends on like the people power. And it's so difficult to retain people when you're just like connecting through a screen. Um, but I mean, it's also been helpful too, like connecting with, for example, 
policymakers, you just like hop on Zoom, uh, which is a lot easier to schedule. So yeah, there are like there are benefits to it. I'm just trying to like look on the bright side. Yes, looking on the bright side is is a good tip for everybody. How do you think uh, your work is going to continue at the college level or afterwards? I definitely know that um, however I move forward, it'll be something that has to do with education equity. As I said, I think it's the key and like the root to so many of our issues. Um, so I'm just so excited that I found like this community of people who also are so dedicated. I'm gonna stay in contact with them. I know students toward equitable public schools will continue. Um, and I'm just excited to like keep those contacts in college and like see how that looks at the college level. That's wonderful. And any future aspirations, um, career-wise or college majors that you're exploring? Yeah, um, so I'm definitely interested in policy. I think I might do public policy or like political science um, just to get that feel. I really think policy is the best vehicle for change. Uh, so no matter what I do, it's going to be like something in that realm, with like housing policy or education policy. So yeah, I'm just really excited to like do something relating to that. Fantastic. Uh, do you have advice for students who are thinking about activism work and trying to get started? Honestly, just like follow, this sounds so cliche, but just like follow your passion and everything else will follow through after that. I know um, I was like, pretty like nervous about starting this and I kind of had like feelings of imposter syndrome because I think as I mentioned initially I really only started my advocacy my junior year so it's been like about a, one school year um, and I knew kids who'd been doing it since like freshman year since eighth grade um, but I mean it's a really like welcoming community and if you just like follow your passion like everything else will fall through and you'll be surprised like how much change you can make and how much people are really like willing to listen to students. Are there any resources that you would recommend for aspiring activists to help them along their journey? Oh, absolutely. I owe so much of my success to the Youth Activism Project. They are amazing. Their services and resources are free, super comprehensive. Um, one thing on their website that literally just takes like two clicks is their guide to change. It'll help young aspiring activists figure out their issue area, how to get their team together and how to really make effective change and have like a strong uh, a strong group. So absolutely recommend that. That's so great. Well, thank you so much for uh, talking about advocacy, activism, and what it's like going into senior year. Thank you so much, Avery. Yeah, thank you for having me.